Hi, right, thanks for joining us for Manufacturing Day 2020. And I'd like to invite you in for a behind the scenes look at IC3D. My name is Michael Cow. I'm the founder and CEO of IC3D. And um, what we do here is 3D printing. Uh, there's lots of different types of 3D printing with uh, uh, plastics and metals and food and concrete. What we do is use plastics and polymers. Um, and there's also a lot of different types and we focus on uh, one, it's FFF. It stands for Fused Filament Fabrication. Uh, basically what we do is we take uh, filament, which looks like weed whacker line, it's just a strand of plastic, and then we feed it through 3D printers and layer by layer, they form parts. Uh, little, little history of IC3D. Um, we uh, started in 2012. Uh, st I founded this in my basement uh, while I was working for a large uh, product design firm. And uh, then started playing with 3D printers and uh, over the next few years on the side, just kept building machines and making uh, filament. And then eventually we added some partners. We have two partners, Kimberly Gibson and Matt Organishak. And we started uh, our 3D printing service also. We, uh, in 2016, I'd say we got a lot more serious and we uh, put a lot more effort into business development and planning. And then in 2017, we moved into this space which is about a 10,000 square foot um, warehouse with some office to really uh, launch the company. So it's been about it's been about three years or so. Um, yeah, I'll take you take you further back. This is our lobby area. About a about a quarter of our space is this office here. We try to keep it a little bit more lively than the than a normal uh, factory or or. Uh, yeah try to make it more like a design studio because that's part of what we have to do is to keep uh, open-mindedness and to to have uh, a lot of creativity to help our customers uh, solve problems um, speaking of customers uh, we mainly serve manu the manufacturing industry um, and, and various uh, industrial companies and what we do for them is we make uh, prototypes uh, of course, which is the most popular use of 3D printing, but we also do a lot of things for their factory. Um, we do uh, jigs and fixtures um, and tooling and things like that. And then we also get into low volume production, let's say in the hundreds to tens of thousands for our customers. Um, before, we, before we go in to the back where the uh, magic happens, um, this is our mission statement here. It is to expand human potential by making manufacturing accessible to all through 3D printing technologies. So basically, uh, manufacturing to get something made is extremely expensive, right? Uh, there's just a high cost for um, equipment and facilities and, and people and things like that. So ma no, traditional manufacturing isn't accessible to a lot of people. Um, and even if you go overseas and things, you still have to commit to really high volumes and things like that. So with 3D printing, you can do very low volumes. You can do a high variety or what they call high mix um, for a relatively low, low cost. So it helps people realize a lot more ideas. So we're entering our, our high bay and we call it the room of manifesting. Um, we felt like we needed a new word that combines uh, manufacturing as well as manifesting it's back there we think of uh, this is manufacturing our manifestations so welcome let's go so how our space is set up is that the front half here of the high bay we're in now is our 3d printing service bureau we have about 40 something printers at the moment what you're seeing here is our desktop 3D printers. Uh, a lot, of, many of you have seen them in schools, and maybe you have one in your in your own basement or garage. These are our larger printers. 
the build volume is about uh, four feet by four feet by three and a half feet. So we can make some pretty large things. Um, this yesterday, we just finished this, uh, another 3D printed chair. This was printed in one piece out of ABS. It took about, took about two days and used about 35 pounds of, of plastic. Um, we have about six of these large printers and uh, these are right now looks like they're printing uh, prototype bicycle frames uh, for one of our customers so all four of these all four of these uh, machines right now we're printing uh, these these parts you can take a peek in these more prototypes for our customers Um, a little history, a little bit more history about uh, 3D printers in our business. Um, we, as you notice, the desktop printers we purchase um, from another company and then we just modify them to what we need them to do. Uh, but, but about four years ago, we started our 3D printing service by designing and building our own printers. Um, so the, the printers back there on the wall um, next to Nick, you can see, are were designed and built uh, from us for about four, uh, again, four years ago. Um, and then over the years, we've just kept modifying our machines and designing and uh, building bigger and bigger ones. So you just saw what we call the E-Class um, machines. And this printer here, uh, it is, I'll say it's yet unnamed but it, we call it the 700 internally just because the build volume is 600 by 700 by about 700 millimeters. Uh, this is our first prototype and it should be done here uh, in the next, within the next month or so. Um, but this is our first printer that we're going to sell uh, and it's an industrial grade medium size printer. It's made from a single weld mint and there's, it's got dual heads for IDEX printing. So back here, as I mentioned before, is our, uh, our filament production area. So that's one nice thing about uh, what we do is with the vertical integration, we can uh, make our own materials to feed our own printers. Give you a second to look at that. So we consume internally about 25% of the filament that we produce in this area. So it just gets sent over and, and to feed our printers. So we'll start, we'll start over here, um, kind of the back of the house, and I'll show you the flow of the materials through to the front. So what we purchase is uh, these big boxes, and we call them Gaylords, and they're just under a ton of plastic resin. Um, and this is how we get them. So we produce, the three main materials that we produce are ABS, PLA and PETG and uh, we're getting into a variety of other materials such as uh, TPUs and um, various uh, kinds of nylons uh, as well as um, additives such as antimicrobial additives and other things that increase temperature resistance and so uh, back here is where we um, the the raw material first kind of gets received and um, I guess we can get let me see here let's get close up and if you can see inside there the resin comes in this form looks like little beads looks like little rice grains 
So this is this is virgin material, which means just from the plastics manufacturer, there's no uh, regrind or additives or recycled content. We also have recycled material. Um, we've released a recycled PETG that's made from uh, plastic bottles and things like that in the uh, food industry. And so we're going to be printing and, and promoting a lot more of that material. So the uh, thing about plastics and resin is that all plastics are hygroscopic. So that means that plastics absorb moisture. And so the first thing that we have to do is to dry that resin. And so that's what these machines are right here. Um, this this uh, machine here and this blue machine, they're called desiccant dryers. So basically there's a big pack of desiccant, uh, which is the same, pretty much the same stuff you find in um, other products or sometimes food that you buy. Uh, and it blows hot air through the desiccant and then through the resin, through the material up here. And so we have to dry the material for, for many hours. Uh, it could be four to 12 hours, depending on what kind of material it is. And after we dry the material, uh, we mix in our additives, which are usually colors, um, but again, it could be antimicrobial things. It could be things that increase the heat, uh, heat resistance. So back there, we've got our uh, mini boxes of additives. And so after we dry the additives separately, but after we dry both of them, we mix them together. And once they're mixed together, we feed it into the extruders. Uh, specifically, it goes into this hopper. It gets fed with this vacuum line into this hopper right here. And then you can kind of see on this screen right here, let's see. Yeah, so this was the hopper. These are the different zones of the uh, barrel and the, and the dyes and things like that. And so we heat those up to different temperatures. And inside this barrel is a screw. A screw is, the screw is like an auger, except it's not only pushing the material, it's, it's uh, kind of shearing the material. And so that action does most of the melting of the plastic. So underneath, underneath this cover, um, is is where all those heating elements in the screw live and then it'll come out here and this is the die and then it'll come out it'll come out here um, not it's not running right now but when it is running it'll come out here and then go through these cooling tanks and then by the time it gets here it's pretty much um, hardened uh, so it's just cooling it down a little further to closer to room temperature because if we coil it on a spool when it's too warm it'll it'll kind of uh, get that it'll get set as a coil and we don't want that um, right here uh, the moisture gets the air gets uh, sorry the moisture gets blown off of the filament line and then um, this is a laser gauge that measures the diameter. You can see our software over there. Again, the line is not running at the moment because we usually run heavy uh, earlier in the week, but we have our own uh, software that takes the two diameters from the laser and plots out the average diameter as well as the roundness. Um, this machine is called a puller. It's just got two belt treads and all that does is pull the filament uh, through the whole system and then this is a winder and this does two things this winds up the uh, filament onto these 10 kilogram spools here and the other thing is we've got these um, air ionizers that blow static electricity off of the materials because you don't want the materials to attract dust and, and dirt and things like that. No bueno. 
for 3D printing. The back here, we've got our wall of finished goods. Um, so we try to keep most of the stock in the 10 kilogram uh, spool format. We do sell those to, to heavy users, um, but to order or whenever we get manufacturing orders, we will uh, re-spool them down to smaller units. Like you see, this is the one kilogram units and up there are the two and a half. There's some down here too, the two and a half uh, kilogram units. So those go to more uh, schools and hobbyists and um, firms that just aren't using as much material. And then lastly, I'll show you the respooling area and kind of where, where we stage material and, and why we do that. Um, so this is our respooling and packaging area. So these machines here, again, turn down the 10 kilogram spools down to the one and the two and a half kilogram spools. Back there, we've got our uh, vacuum sealers, um, our labels, our, our product boxes and things. And then back in that corner, we've got our kind of shipping department with, you see lots of cardboard, empty cardboard boxes back there. Um, oh, the one last thing I'll show you is this right here. Looks like a DIY greenhouse, um, but this has been our uh, solution for keeping material dry. So the if you let material sit out, it will eventually absorb uh, moisture and things like that. So we try to keep the humidity inside under within 20% relative humidity. Right now today, it's showing about um, 28, it's showing 28% relative humidity. So the inside is drier, is drier than the outside. So all this is, again, is a, is a greenhouse and we, we put material in here and we have a, a dehumidifier in the back corner. The material here is basically staging for a 3D printing service, especially very specialty materials uh, like, a, like a lot of nylons and, and polycarbonates and uh, things like that that are very hygroscopic. And it's also storing materials uh, that are for respooling. Because sometimes it's easier to keep the extruders running for more time and you're just cranking out those 10 kil kilogram spools uh, before they're needed in respooling. So that's it at IC3D. Um, we are uh, very excited to be in this industry. It's very fastly, quickly growing, um, and it's helping make our manufacturers in the, in the U.S. more competitive. Uh, it's helping them by uh, reducing cost and also re reducing uh, lead times for them, reducing the time for R&D to get products out into the market, and, and even, again, be uh, their main manufacturing method to some of these uh, lower volume products. So hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're, we're only a team of about 17 people. So you contacting us isn't going to get lost in the void somewhere. I'll probably eventually see it and welcome you um, to come over and chat with us anytime. But hope everyone uh, stays safe and well during these times. See you later.